talked about are underpinned by money. So I don't know if this is relevant to the deputy leader role, but um, how do you think we could improve the finances of the Green Party so that we can campaign more effectively nationally as well as locally? That's a fairly straightforward question. I might take another one and then, and then do a round of both questions. So, yeah. Yeah. You talked about having to communicate these messages and you said what you want to communicate. I'd want to ask you personally how you communicate, specifically how do you use social media to communicate? So, uh, this time let's go around uh, to the order again. So, And, well, I do think that actually the role of deputy leader is really key in addressing one of our biggest concerns, which is that we don't have a sustainable form of fundraising. Um, and I don't know what it's like here, but certainly in Brighton and Hove, which is one of the biggest parties and seen as quite a successful party, if there's by-election or um, a surprise election, often we're caught short and um, everyone's putting a tenner in and then we're trying to find money at the last minute and that can't go on for local <coughs> parties. Um, and so what I have outlined on my website is that we need to support regional parties to then aid smaller parties. And our SWs, regional support workers, I think work really well. So in the West Midlands, they've already managed to do that. And we could have a policy where, for example, we would match funds so the local party would, would have half of the funding and then the other half would come from national party so that we could have paid professional staff to coordinate. I know as working part of a team on the general election and the local election campaigns in Birmingham that only with paid professional staff will we able to coordinate work with volunteers, not just locally, but across the region and across the country. But where will that money come from? Where will the money come from um, from National Party? Well, first of all, I think it has to come from our members. I'm really proud to be part of a party that isn't backed by big business or trade unions. I'm really proud that it's us and grassroots members who are paying into the party, but we need to grow we cannot stay where we are now. And I'm really ambitious for this party. I want us to do our best and I want us to succeed. I touched on trade unions and big business. I don't think that we should necessarily be completely backed by them. I think our main form of fundraising has to come through growth of the party. But what I found in Brighton Cove is that speaking to trade unions, we've actually managed to secure funding through, for example, um, adverts in our Greenleaf newspaper. So there are ways in which we can work with the trade unions who must feel completely sold out by the Labour Party um, and are looking for a, for a successful alternative. I've also worked with some big business, but big business that ticks both our ethical and environmental boxes, like Lush, for example, who have supported us in one-off campaigns. And I helped write a document to present to people like Lush or high donors to bring that money in. And I want to do the same for national parties so that we, we have the money as well as the members to fight elections. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, how do we communicate on social media? Okay, so um, I use Twitter quite effectively and have over a thousand followers now. Um, but it didn't start off like that. And I think that um, as Greens, um, there's often a small pool there that exists. Um, but what I've managed to do is, for example, in the ward that I represent is called Goldsmith, I've created my own hashtag. Do people understand this? <laughs> um, so the hashtag Goldsmith. And through that, I was able to find my own constituents. So now I have a huge bank of constituents who follow me. And so I'm able to say, you know, I'm at this meeting and I'm saying this, does anyone else want anything said? It's on X or Y or Z. So that's how I've used it quite effectively. Twitter I found to be more effective than Facebook. Um, although Facebook pages for particular campaigns or for particular policy areas have been really successful. But um, for me, Twitter's been a great tool in communicating and engaging with, with the local population. Well, firstly, on the 
fundraising and I agree, we need more money, we're far too limited by um, a lack of funds. Um, I've worked quite closely with people in the party office, particularly when I've been sort of trying to do press around some of the great new policy we've got. And when you go in the party office and you realise it's really just a couple, a very small number of paid people um, who are under a lot of pressure, you can understand how you can sometimes feel frustrated and you think we should be getting this message out and we're not, and it's just not no one's fault. It's a lack of money. So um, fundraising, I think, has got to be an absolute key priority. Um, growing members obviously will help, but I think there's a whole layer of supporters that are actually beyond our members who we should be reaching out to. And reaching out to them through um, different sort of NGOs who maybe have the, along the same sort of ideas as us and making sure that we go, that we're talking to them, giving speeches. Um, and that's a way that we can gain support and fundraising. Um, also, I think that we do have to look at business, we have to look at the right business. And I know from my friends on the regional council, they have been looking at this and drawing up a sort of list of ethical criteria, which I think is vital. And there'll be a panel that are looking at that. And obviously, as a deputy leader, that's something that you've got to keep an eye on and feel that you could engage with business. You know, not all business is bad. You work for a small business. And through my work in a small business, I know that you do have to invest for success. You have to invest in, as a vet, the equipment, the right staff, to build and move forward. And we mustn't be afraid to have those conversations. And also, I think, also we mustn't be afraid to say, you know, fundraising, it takes a lot of expertise. It's something that, you know, there are professionals out there doing it. And we may have, I think we should be sort of paying people to give us some advice look at best practice out there and, and use that. On social media, um, I had a massive learning curve during my London campaign. Um, I hadn't been on Twitter, I joined, and um, I was, to be honest, a little bit cynical about it to start with. Oh, it's Stephen Fry telling us what he has for his breakfast. But actually, when I learned how to use it, and I was lucky I had some um, quite expert people around me, it is a fantastically useful tool. Um, managing to engage with local blogs, local activists, and then actually nationally. I'm being followed because of my animal sort of slant by a number of large animal charities who will retweet things that I say about animal issues to tens of thousands of people, and I'm Green Caroline. So then I pick up a whole load of followers. And also just today, there was a little bit of criticism of the Green Party about disability. I know that we're in the process of rewriting that policy, I've been involved in it, I was able to go back, refute that, picked up a lot of followers, and they're going to know the truth about what we're saying in the Green Party. So it's a powerful tool if used correctly, and I think there is still learning to be done in the Green Party, it's another thing to be sharing. Okay. Yes, I'm on Twitter. Um, <laughs> Twitter as Councillor Arman. I also occasionally um, Twitter as, as not in Green Party because we decided that we would have a kind of a joint official one that we could put out announcements and things like that and to communicate to people within the local party and you know, follow those people who are interested and try and grab that. And then I've got my own one as well. So that if I say something really controversial for some reason, it doesn't immediately reflect on the local party. Um, like what's on form and what you know. Um, your social media is really, really useful to use. It's, it's a, a very powerful tool. Um, the, the Twitter feeds are good. They're good for sort of picking up on things that are happening and doing a quick and immediate response if you have to. Um, I think blogging is quite good, but I do think there's an awful lot of people who spend a lot of time looking at other people's blogs and looking at people, those same people looking at theirs, not realising that most of the people who are in the rest of the country don't read their blogs at all. They don't put it down. Um, I think Facebook is very useful. Um, it's just such a good way of, of getting out there. But there's, there was one question about, about money and local parties being strapped for money, which kind of comes into the fundraising. Um, we had the issue, which I guess that loads of local parties doing, uh, is setting up a website so that people know you're there. So you set one up, and then it becomes defunct after a while because the person who did it is moving on, or as a student has gone somewhere else. Then somebody else takes it over, and they do a bit, and then and you just think that you have a website that's set up and it fails, set up and it fails. And I've seen this in loads of local parties, and you can see the remains of local parties' websites around the place, all over the country. And um, and some of, uh, in some places, the, the National Party has helped and has put together this ModX thing that you might have seen emails around this. So there's this kind of like a standard template that people can use. 
But if you can't go down that route, if you're not particularly tacky, then the easiest way to do as well as a party, and it's cheap and it's free, is a, is a Facebook page. And people do that, and we use that, and it's really easy to say, there's a meeting, come along, uh, talk to <coughs> other local organisations like Greenpeace, like Friends of the Earth, and it's a ready-made communications tool, and it's free. So you know, I would say, yes, make the best use of social media uh, you, you can. Um, in terms of fundraising, it is a difficult thing. Um, I was three years as, as chair of GPEX, and we constantly had this thing about trying to get funding in, trying to get funding in. And it's a very difficult thing. You know, I, I was election coordinator in Brighton and Grove at the previous general election. Yeah, we got 20% uh, of the vote, and uh, the Tories looked really worried when the 10,000 mark was put in the wrong place and they thought that they were behind it. <laughs> um, but next time, it starts to So I think, I think what we have to do is we do have to look at talking to ethical businesses. Mm. We've said for ages and ages that we want to help grow a green economy. And that economy is starting to grow. It's not as fast as it should be. It's nowhere near, uh, nowhere near as well supported as it should be. But there are people out there who are doing that. There's people like Electricity. There's people like Lush. There's a local company where, where I work called Pedal Express. They said to us, couriers, uh, if you want to go longer range than, than cycling, then they'll put things on the train. They'll um, use electric vehicles, things like that. And, and these kind of companies are there. You have to talk to them and, say, and not be backward about it and say, Come on, guys, we're speaking on the same agenda. We're looking to try and sort of put more funding, put more emphasis to get the economy moving the same way that you're talking about and you're interested in. Um, can we have 50 quid for some leaflets, please? Um, and we also, I think, have to talk to the trade unions too, because the unions are being very badly served by Labour at the moment. But they hum and are and then shuffle their feet and then come the next to an election, quite often put their hands in the pocket and hand it over to Labour again. And I think we have to say, well, come on. It said, particularly people like Unison, if you look at some of the, uh, the, the stuff that Unison done, uh, has done about uh, greening the economy, it chimes far more with us than it does with anything that they've actually ever done, and a lot of the, and all of the, that they've both said as well. Um, I do think that we also have to look to a growing our membership and getting, uh, getting more funds in from members. That is a very difficult thing, I know. Um, one of the things that we pushed for, again, when I was on GPEX, was, was getting the, um, the direct debit system in place, mm. which was a real pain, and it did take quite a while, uh, while to get done. But now it's in place, and that makes a real difference. It <coughs> makes it so much easier to sort of keep the money coming in, rather than having to go back every year and try and have you. It reduces the churn in membership, it's a huge advantage. <coughs> Um, I think we need to build on that and look at uh, also uh, getting more events together. Um, one of the things that we do uh, as a party, and again it's something that's to, that's to learn, and it's the kind of good practice to try and expand, to, to expand the ground places, make sure that your local party meetings are interesting, so that they're not just about business, <coughs> otherwise they'll just get so dull. So half, half, you know, some of it to do with business, some of it to do with a local speaker, um, some of it to do with a fundraising event or something like that instead, or have a separate fundraising event. And we talk about NGOs. I'm not quite sure they're such a great source. Okay, they're not such a great source of money because usually they're coming and asking us for the money as well. Um, but where it does help and where we can build things is, is they come and talk to us, so we go out and talk to them at their local meetings as well. And that builds a member, that builds a crown as well as supporters, members, and hopefully funds as well.